Ma'am, I'm audible now. Yes, better. You you are audible now. Thank you. May I request you all to please put on your videos. We don't want to miss on the group photo. So that's the only way before starting the pro program today, we may have a quick picture. Shikha, Adarsh, Kanchan, can we have your video on? See, we can't see you directly, but if you have your videos on, we know that we have our participants actually involved. So a very good evening, one and all. Yesterday we had few lectures and uh, to provide, it was the aim to provide you a good overview of why we need scanning. Uh, as many of you know, the conventional technique is to take impressions. And uh, now with use of digital technologies, now impression taking, taking would be an obsolete task because all these impressionless techniques are available and very uh, the patients are really happy that they don't have that all material going into their oral cavity to make the impression. And they used to fee, have a gag reflex also because of so much of tray or some material going in their mouth. It's just the scanner now which has to go and it has to take the pictures. So the, uh, the thing we are going to do today is uh, we'll have Dr. Jawad, uh, Dr. Swati yesterday told us that there are basically two types of scanner, either to take an extra oral scanner or to use an intraoral scanner. So what we plan today is to start with extra oral scanner and then uh, we'll move on to the intraoral scanner and we'll have the actual demo of both the types. 
so you will have a view what it's uh, like on the screen when the scanning is being done so with this i invite dr sumit kumar to uh, give us an overview of the extra oral scanner as dr swati told with the vectra so dr over to you dr sumit thank you ma'am is my screen visible yes am i audible yes uh dr sumit kumar is uh, science research scientist in our uh, uh, thr mru at king george's medical university and uh, he'll be showing us the extra oral scanner today so uh, in this week we will be discussing about the face scanner and 3d camera so today i, I will be discussing uh, in short about the uh, 3d camera and face scanner and then we will have a demo of uh, the vectra uh, h1 3d scanner which we are having so this is our uh, lab at 3d dhr georgian maxillo facial simulation lab and these are the two links which from which you can log in and have a glimpse of uh, what we are doing uh, is to start off with uh, uh, the 3d thing uh, we have to understand what is 2d so a 2d is uh, if we are having something in two dimensions that is we can measure the length and the breadth so that is a 2d and when we can have the third component that is the z axis we can refer it as a, a 3d imaging the 2d camera are the normal cameras which we are using the photographs which we are clicking from our mobile phones uh, the uh, small cameras dslr cameras we are using these these are these all generate 2d images and the camera having multiple uh, lenses is the one from which we can click the 3d images the basic purpose of picking uh, uh, the images or getting the uh, images using a 3d camera or a scanner is to acquire the 3d surface we want to acquire the 3d surface and then to have measurements the conventional methods which were used are the vernier caliper measurements which are and the bevel protector measurements uh, we used to use these two for measurements on patient space for the anatomical part which we want to measure the 2d photographs uh, are also the conventional measurements we can measure the length and the breadth or the width uh, using the conventional methods with advent of the digital technology the advanced methods like 3d laser scanning stereo photogrammetry motion scanning structured light and radiations are uh, came into picture and now we are having these technology now what we want to acquire in the 3d surface acquisition is the shape the proper shape the proper anatomy of the object which is of interest to us then the color the texture and the tone these are four important uh, aspects uh, which we want to acquire using the surface acquisition now what is coming to the photogrammetry uh, but we start off with uh, clicking images or scanning the object then stitching and merging those and then quantitation of the same this is totally referred as photogrammetry this the basic principles of photogrammetry were covered yesterday by swati ma'am now we will be using the photogrammetry technique in our demo today the major in photogrammetry uh, photographs are clicked from various orientations and the computer soft where is unit data defined as the art and science of extracting the 3d information from photographs the process involves taking overlapping photographs of an object or a structure or space and then converting them into digital models we are interested in generating the digital models of the anatomical uh, structure of interest to us which may be face which may be jaw and like that photogrammetry so, just a minute just to yes, let you all know that if you see in my backdrop there is a beautiful building that is king george medical university's yeah. building and we thought uh, we have so much of uh, 3d technologies in our lab why not generate a 3d model of uh, the kgmu building so in order to 
do that we had to click many many pictures so with a normal camera we took uh, several 2d pictures and then using some software maybe pradeep would let us know what are the softwares which can help generate 3d model from a 2d pictures so series of 2d pictures were used to generate a 3d model of the kgmu building and then finally we could use it as an stl to make our 3d printed model so that's how it's very important that we understand that 2d and the 3d how we can uh, use them over to you dr sonit photogrammetry uh, was previously and more often used by surveyors architects engineers to create the topo topographic maps uh, the architectural part the meshes the point clouds and uh, or based on those they stitched those photographs together uh, first they used to do it uh, manually and then the, now with the help of the advancement in software technology we are doing it uh, digitally uh, so photograph uh, grammatry is used by clinicians at a later stage rather than uh, we are the one who are adapted it from the engineers now coming on to stereo photogrammetry i am discussing the stereo photogrammetry as the camera which we will be demonstrating in a short while is the stereo photogrammetry based uh, technology where two or more camera are configured in a single unit uh, uh, to to obtain the 3d coordinate of the morphology uh, which you will be uh, appreciating in a in a while the photogrammetry uh, uh, is uh, images were acquired using two ways one is uh, having a number of or series of cameras and the object is placed in between like in the image you can see that in between there is a chair and a number of cameras hundreds of cameras are fixed so this type of photogrammetry is referred as the as a terrestrial photogrammetry and the other one uh, the aerial photogrammetry where the uh, plane was used in in, in uh, past as now we are having drones like ma'am uh, told that we click the photographs of kgmu from all aspects so the drone facility was uh, used in uh, getting the aerial uh, snaps and then merging them together the basic uh, steps involved in the photogrammetry are the scanning and or the clicking of photographs then blending those photographs and to create a topology and then a finally a mesh network like uh, structure was generated which is uh, having a number of triangles to quantify and to uh, measure uh, the distances of interest of the object photographed or scanned using the technique the th now there is a basic difference between a 3d photograph and a scanning procedure the scanners which we are having like and scan and are usually used uh, in the industrial uh, uh, part of the commercial uses in the industry which we have applied now in the clinical sciences the object rotates uh, around an axis and the scanner is fixed so the scan it it, it is based on projection of a linear um, uh, laser beam and based on and the image is acquired using the laser beam and then deconstructed using the software however in a 3d photograph uh, as evident in the uh, photo uh, in the slide that uh, uh, that the soldier is standing a number of cameras are placed so a number of images are clicked and overlap to have a uh, 3d generated model for the same the, num the commonly used uh, intra uh, extra oral scanners are the peel 3d the articolio and scan hx and scan pro artic spider these are portable devices lightweight portable devices which which uses a laser beam to generate the scanned image of the same the scanned image can be used uh, uh, can be evaluated using a number of softwares available which include mis which include uh, uh, rhinoceros and, uh, and and a number of more other available tools which we can which we have to buy and few of these uh, are having dedicated uh, softwares for studying the facial anatomy the artic 3d large format uh, scanner as shown in, uh, in the image here this one uh, is a fixed uh, scanner which rotates on a tripod and captures the images using the laser beam the commonly used intraoral scanners available are uh, are shown in this uh, slide uh, which we are using today we will be demonstrating the trios 3d uh, from c shape uh, uh, intraoral scanner and another is available from the 
plan Mika preferred as uh, known as Emerald, and another one is uh, available from uh, the uh, dense ply serona, the Cirex scanner. Now these techniques are used to uh, uh, in a number of cases, and one of them is rhinoplasty, as uh, as in, in demonstrated in this study. And the patient-specific implants are easier to achieve. We are able to uh, provide personalized and precise medicine or precise care or customized care to the patient using these uh, tools and techniques. Here, the ear is scanned, uh, so using these uh, photogrammetry tools and the uh, photographs and the scanner. And then uh, this is uh, how we will be um, uh, gen recording the record the surface details of a 3D photograph. We can evaluate the craniofacial growth, the asymmetry, the surgical planning can be done on the on the screen. A predictive model can be generated. Uh, patient can be educated about the changes what which we uh, assume uh, to be uh, to be there in the post-operative phase and how we can improve the aesthetics of the uh, patient, which is the chief concern of any surgical procedure and improve the quality of life. Coming on to the workflow of 3D image acquisition using Vectra H1 3D camera. This camera is the, what we are having in our lab and we are using it in a number of cases. The camera is, a, is based on the principle of stereo photogrammetry where uh, two, uh, uh, two cameras are placed and, uh, and, and uh, Focus is done. The uh, light source is then a, here. I so want to show the. I would. I would like to make a comment here. Yes. Uh, sometime in two thousand eight, when I was in UK, uh, that time it was uh, a very large camera. So entire room has to be set up as a three D camera room, where the patient had to sit in center, and uh, there were different cameras to take uh, multiple images and then they were stitched and that pile also was very heavy so if we wanted to so if we have been clicked and we want to have that uh, stitched image on our laptop it was huge size now with advent of technologies the number uh, the size has become smaller and when we were thinking that for our surgical cases we need to have something uh, smaller maybe. So we had the options of uh, having the uh, facial scanners from InScan, as Dr. Sumit just talked about, InScan or 3DMD, which we, I talked about that the entire room had to be set up, or the Vectra 3D. So this is just portable small camera. And uh, Dr. Swati also showed yesterday about it, how we need to focus, how we need to place them. And then uh, pictures can be taken maybe three images, and then they are staged together. Over to you, Dr. Sumit. Uh, as ma'am told about the 3D MD, that, was, that technology uh, is a, a terrestrial uh, photogrammetry uh, thing. And uh, that includes a number of cameras fixed on various uh, axes. And the patient was, uh, has to sit in between and the photographs were clicked and merged together with the, uh, but, but, and that is based on the structured light concept as uh, explained by Swati ma'am yesterday. And now these are the portable DSLR based uh, technology uh, where you can see the how we can acquire the, the small video. So because these are fast, even children can be clicked. So without uh, having their, without becoming impatient because children usually are not stagnant for quite some time. So you, the picture has to be clicked very fast and that is how with these portable cameras, we can do a very quick uh, recording. This video it. shows that uh, how the uh, 3D image is acquired. Uh, firstly, in the frontal view, the, the, the two beams are to be merged at a single point and then, and then from the light, right lateral and left lateral aspect. There is no feeling of claustrophobic. The patient feels very comfortable uh, while we click the photographs and he has just to stand and uh, the, the job is done in seconds. So the scanning time or the image acquisition time is uh, very, uh, very less. 
the two main things are required for any scanning device or uh, imaging device and that is uh, the scanning time should be least for patient comfort and another is the details the surface detail how good the surface details we uh, acquire the uh, traditionally available uh, commercial scanners uh, which use laser beam technology uh, are crude as they don't have to acquire the very much details but now also the nscan pro uh, scanner available acquires uh, uh, something uh, to a great accuracy however we are using this uh, camera as we don't want to have an extra software for image processing now uh, this is uh, i will be going in short about the details of uh, the uh, camera and the software part of it we are having vectra h1 now this is the opening as we click on the software this part gets opened we can have the uh, camera directly connected to this software or we can click it separately as shown in the previous video the new patient uh, and uh, or the look up for the patient uh, uh, window is there we can we click on the desired uh, icon for new patient we have to register it using the last name the first name the patient id gender uh, date of birth and the email address for record keeping uh, then going further we can uh, look up for the patients and this type uh, of window generates and here is the series of uh, cases where we click the photograph and then we click the photo uh, that open the photograph for further analysis and once we open uh, the once we click the photographs the software shows it in this way as these three uh, photographs one is in the frontal view one is in the left lateral and one is in the right lateral and these are stitched together to generate the 3d image the various profile can be easily uh, studied using this uh, uh, software where the where the patient uh, where the where the software orients the patient photograph in various directions the measurements of uh, uh, the measurements or the assessment can be easily done it is more precise as uh, we can make mistake while uh, measuring it with the scale and protector it is a computer generated fixed type of uh, measurements the landmarks the cephalometric landmarks uh, are marked automatically or even if we want to mark it manually the freedom is there to mark them we can we can go for contouring uh, like we can have a few changes in the photographs like we can uh, modify the wrinkles on the skin that we can uh, clone a part and get it merged to somewhere else and we can resurface the surface anatomy of the photograph now this is the chin chin augmentation procedure uh, which we can do and uh, educate the patient and have a feel uh, you can see it in the video that uh, the, uh, the chin can be moved in the anterior posterior direction uh, using using the software the upward and downward movement uh, uh, can also be done using the same so we can have uh, an idea that uh, about before while performing the genioplasty or to be seen that what profile changes or the soft tissue changes would be what we are expecting the for the patient and then the uh, the the width of the chin in the in can be expanded or can be constricted using the software we can also have mark a point on the lateral surface and move it in the forward or backward direction explaining the patient about the desired results a uh, area can also be marked and it can be further uh, extrapolated uh, uh, at a point to have a feel that how much we want to move like this So this is also good if we want to put dermal fillers somewhere, and we need to see how much of volume augmentation is required, and based on that uh, volume, we can find uh, whether how much of uh, filler has to be deposited to get that much of fullness. Uh, there is a question in the chat box. Doctor B. Srinivasan is saying, "Is the Vectra software available for use only with its scanner?" Yeah. or is it compatible with any scanner or input data source 
No, uh, it is uh, it it acquires images from the photographs we clipped from the Vectra H1 only, and it is not an open source software, and other images will not be imported because the landmarks it stitches is based on the uh, images it acquired using this camera. But this video demonstrates the rhinoplasty procedure where you can appreciate the uh, the changes which which we can show to the patient while moving various anatomical various surfaces of the anatomical structure so this is how uh, this software uh, works we we will be showing the demo of the same yeah, just after this video now this is the vectra h1 camera 3d camera is it visible to everyone yes now we connect it to the soft, soft software i will be sharing the screen from the lab uh, system so you all can understand that we as uh, professionals uh, as maxillofacial surgeons or as plastic surgeons actually need it very badly because we have to do the changes in the face and to have this and uh, plan our cases based on the uh, scanning of the extraoral surfaces is really helpful uh, just a while while we are connecting it to the system uh, the screen is not yet shared i suppose yeah yes. it will be shared in a while now this is the opening screen of the vectra and uh, here is patient and then we can capture the image uh, clicking on this uh, icon so i we are having a patient uh, over here uh, so here it is important that the hair should not be visible yes it is visible that the, the hair should be separated from the forehead otherwise it will not uh, give a good image so the hair should be placed behind the ear should be away from the forehead so whatever is visible even the backdrop if there is something in the backdrop it will not take that so that is the good part 
but the face which has uh, of importance to us should be clear of any uh, so if there is any cloth covering so the neck collar so it has to be folded such that the neck is clear is it visible yes it is visible so the these two dots are to be aligned at a, at a single point and the clip the image is clipped from here so yes we wanted to have a look at the screen what is happening there fail to connect how the image is captured अपने माथे से बाल हटाओ this is how the image is uh, clicked and uh, it is it will be further uh, evaluated uh, stitched using the the software can we decide our own points no they are fixed points and they are, they are have we have to adjust our distance from the patient so that the point two points uh, become a single point if then we click at that point only so it is processing if there is some error it will show that the error is there and uh, we have to again click the photographs so if the patient is smiling will we get a smiling picture yeah. if the patient how the lips should be like in a half smile full smile Yes, ma'am. This this patient is really serious. Serious, he is. He is very irritated, sort of. So there is some error in automatic. Like the this there is some if if there is some error, it will demonstrate in the image that here is the error point. And again, we have to click a photograph. Then we have to stitch it, and then the three D image will be generated. so i will be starting uh, the further uh, demonstration based on the previously clipped photographs uh there is another extra oral scanner in skin but that is hand uh, held in the hands so sometimes your hands are shaky then that the image will be disturbed so either it is mounted on a stand so that way uh, we feel that uh, vectra is good there are three models in vectra vectra h1 h2 and uh, the third one so this one is for face then another one is for breast and the third model is for full body so this gives us an advantage for breast reconstruction as well so we can have the imaging not only of the face but uh, specified for other parts of the body as well many patients come to us with ear defects so our focus is on capturing ear properly uh we 
still need to optimize it for scanning or for taking pictures of eyes because many of our patients uh, which are mucor infected now have lost their eyes so we have to optimize and see whether it can whether can it can the surface is good but we have to apply in various areas and check whether it is uh, serving its purpose or not uh, stitching is a bit time taking process we have to mark appropriate points and based on those points the three profiles would be stitched the three images would be stitched together to generate the uh, 3d image so maybe the patient does vitra scanner come with its own camera body come with its own complete unit yeah. so uh, this is the you can uh, see different profiles while clicking on the icons available i think uh, pradeep has also has a video where he made uh, the 3d to work as 4d means smiling and blinking also he made available yeah, that is a um, new thing which is uh, uh, based on the software technology advancement the 4d component is being introduced where the time component or the space component is there and uh, that is the start of the virtual reality sort of thing in the surgical procedures yeah and we will be having uh, surgeons having wearing those virtual reality like gadgets while before going into the theaters so this is how this uh, is uh, because this is on recording we can't show that uh, video here but we can uh through the software we can make the person smile and we can make the person we blink can, as well we can perform contouring uh, with three uh, main uh, parts are there contouring chin augmentation and rhinoplasty so uh, the from contouring sir any the resurfacing can be done yeah and then the wrinkles can be uh, those in is a young child so not much wrinkles are there but when those cases where uh, we, we are planning to use some filler sort of thing then the wrinkles uh, can be removed and uh, the patient can be educated or demonstrated based on the image uh, so that. yes that's good if there is any question from the participants you are free to ask and we can on extra oral scanning then we can trim the image uh, uh, using various uh, tools available uh, in the trimmer like we want if you want to crop it then uh, no if you just want to have the ear separated from here we have to crop it like uh, like the photographs we uh, crop uh, the segmentation is not uh, available in these uh, in this software for segmentation we have to go into mimix and then yeah and also uh, move it using at the lasso tool this part will be removed the marked part will be removed we can do it as per our requirement so if we have a scanned statue of lord ganesha we can make him smile <laughs> we can make him sing as well <laughs> from the latest software we are having using the time uh, component there that is a 4d sort of thing and then uh, if you want to have yeah. measurements is there is a question is the intraoral scanning combined with extraoral scanning in certain cases yes, yes we can club uh, we are planning to do a study to see the accuracy of the extraoral scanning by comparing it with the ct scan soft tissue profile and see what are the deviations so this is uh, what uh, pradeep is uh, currently focusing on to see the accuracy because all these uh, systems are there but the accuracy is still not yet uh, defined so we need to study the accuracy part of all these tools these are the various uh, uh, tools available 
Uh, There's a question, ma'am. Is it possible to assess how many ml of filler will help us achieve a particular level of contouring? I suppose so. Pradeep, would you want to let us know if uh, we are expanding the fullness? Uh, we are making it full, fuller. Uh, the volume can be measured. Yeah. The volume can be measured. Uh, though it is uh, more of a clinical judgment. And based on that, but uh, the volume can be measured using the mimic. The spectacles have to be removed uh, before yes. scanning. Because if we, uh, if the spectacles are there, it shows an error, and uh, we have to re-click the photographs. Yeah. So whatever surface has to be scanned, it should be clear of any obstacles. So I think with this, uh, we can move on to the intraoral scanning part. How it can be merged with CT scan? Uh, we have to uh, generate the, we need to have the DICOM data. This uh, image has to be transported to the MIS. Uh, so now, whatever file has to be exported is to be in STL format. And then the MIS software or the Mimics Institute software will have access to the STL files. As Dr. Swati was telling yesterday, the STL is standard tessellation, tessellation language or triangulation language. So that is the format which the uh, softwares import. And uh, actually, it, any any image generated through the DICOM reconstructed part or clipped with the uh, 3D camera or scanned uh, has to uh, in, be in the form of a mesh which is in the triangular form, uh, tri small triangles. The image is uh, split it into small triangles. And that is where how the STL reads, the software reads those files. This is how we can uh, generate. So, so to answer the question, how it can be transferred. So if we have a CT scan data, that is the DICOM format, and that is imported in MIS software. So again, the soft tissue or thresholding has to be done of the CT data so that we have the soft tissue contoured through the CT and over to that we have to import this STL file and the both can be superimposed to look for any deviation in the two files. Yes, so we can uh, go for the rhinoplasty procedure here also, you can see. Yeah. So, yeah. I think the same should, thing I have shown in the. I think, I think we should move on to the intraoral <laughs> scanning part. Uh, the extraoral scanning you all have seen. I I'll share just. The, so let me take you to my screen. apply it to whether we can apply it for children whether we can apply it to any uh, the image will be nice so when we were purchasing our uh, intraoral scanner we were actually looking at the scanning speed where we were looking at the scanner size but when I actually bought it what happened uh, we found that whenever there is a cleft in the palate, that means the continuity of the palate is broken. It is difficult to scan. Uh, we appreciated that in a mucor patient where there was damage in the palatal bone and because of the gap created in the palate, it was actually behaving like a cleft palate and we couldn't stitch. As uh, Dr. Swati discussed yesterday, it has to have its initial point of scanning. And every time the red ball comes, that means the uh, it has to go a step back 
locate at the initial position and then again start scanning so here what happened whenever there is a defect in the palette that uh, continuity is broken and you need to again realign it to get its uh, initial point and then scan it as a result the entire palette doesn't scan in a single go we were also looking at a scanner which is open which is not a closed system that means it could be applicable to any software we were looking at a scanner which doesn't have an yearly subscription otherwise it becomes very expensive and maybe we don't have that much of uh, funds every year and then purchasing such an equipment will be a waste so we wanted an academic version where there is a license which is permanent so once bought it can be used for lifetime then uh, ease of use yes so what we did we started scanning with ear because that was our focus of attention we have to scan ear so even with intraoral scanner we should not be fixed to scanning just the dental arch we should be able to scan whatever we feel like we scan the ear and we were very happy when we bought it and we started using it we thought oh i have to give in pd alveolar nerve block i have to train my students it's covid time uh, we don't have access to patients so we have to scan that area and we have to tra train our students then what we found whatever there is fixed tissue we could scan it like teeth from one side to the other side we could scan very quickly but if the tissue is to be scanned if the vestibule is to be scanned which is a mobile surface every time it's changing because it's being stretched so that is changing and then the scanner loses its area of recognition and then it is difficult to scan the tongue scanning tongue is difficult because it's a mobile structure but scanning teeth scanning the uh, alveolus it's easy so uh, these are the points uh, which are to be considered before making use we also never thought that the uh, world's most popular scanner would be difficult to be used in some of our patients uh because it was difficult to take impression in those patients where the mouth opening was restricted we thought oh we'll scan it okay no issue if the patient cannot be taken for impressions no issue we'll scan it now when we tried scanning them our intraoral scanner was not going into the oral cavity then we found oh that is a dis disturbing thing because now the intraoral scanner is not going into the oral cavity how to scan so most of our mucor patients also could not be scanned otherwise we thought we would be able to scan the palate up to the cranial wherever the bone loss is we would scan it and we'll uh, digitally design an obturator but here we failed so there are limitations of uh, 3d scanners maybe in times to come we'll have better scanners Mm. so what we have as of now there are scanners which have a cord which are corded scanners or cordless scanners this is a chinese uh, scanner runi uh, runi scanner this is a chinese very low cost type of scanners so as you see they are corded and uh, again they have a scanner surface but this has to go into the oral cavity to scan area these are very uh, low cost lightweight and can scan the color very uh, the color of the teeth the color of the gingiva so efficacy wise they are good now the other popular uh, intraoral scanner is from ceric and as you see uh, this is from dentsply uh, but it comes with a cart so if you have to use it in one clinic then you can't make it move uh, from one clinic to other clinic because it is the cart which has to be uh, moved to every clinic so hence we didn't prefer it although uh, the size of the scanner here if you see it's smaller than the uh, one which we are using the trias scanner so we have to see whether we want to use a corded or a cordless 
Now the advantage of a corded is that as soon as the scanning is done, immediately it is transferred to the screen to the system. So that way it is faster. Also, uh, cordless ones have to be charged, and uh, maybe in only one scanning, one patient only they may get discharged. So the cordless ones are handy because they can be moved from one chair to the other chair, dental chair to scan. But then they have to be charged. So every uh, scanner comes with its own advantages and disadvantages. So these scanners are held in a pen grasp, and this is the surface which is used, which is at an angle of forty-five degrees, and it's used for scanning the teeth. There's a switch on button, and then it has to be pressed to scan it. Another very popular scanner is from Medit. Initially, they had Medit I five hundred, but this year only they have come with the Medit I seven hundred. And I'll share with you some overviews because last two years we have been having a lecture on intraoral scanners from a dentist in New Zealand who has, uh, I think, who is the one of the initial uh, users of the intraoral scanner. He runs his own institute of digital dentistry in New Zealand. So I'll share uh, his last year's lecture. A link, and you may have a good overview of all the intraoral scanners. This is what Dr. Swati was mentioning. This is the world's smallest intraoral scanner. So, if you see here, the, uh, the scanning area is quite small, and it can go probably in most of the oral cavities to scan the teeth. These are mostly USB type of scanners, and this is the Institute of Digital Dentistry I was talking about. Another is from uh, Plan Mika, which is the emerald scanner. So here also you see oh, the area is bigger, and this is the one which we have at our center, the Trias Four. So this is the scanning area. It is uh, we have a cordless version as well as the corded version. So at times we use the corded one, at times we use the cordless one. The advantage of using a Trias Four is that it has a caries detection possibility as well. So this is a mucor patient we were scanning, and here, as you see, there is a bone loss in the palate. It could scan only from. It starts with the teeth, and from the teeth till the the continuity is maintained. That much of area on the palate it has scanned, but uh, it couldn't connect this part to the other part. From the lost defect, from the defect side up to the dental arch, very beautifully it has taken that impression. So over to you, Dr. Sumit, if you can take us to scanning of dental arch through the intraoral scanner. Yes, ma'am. Sure. So there's a question from uh, Jitendra Chawla. What is the format of images we get with 3D camera? It can be converted to image processing format. How it can be merged with CT scan? We'll show you when we are uh, working on these softwares. In that uh, period, we'll show how this image is exported onto the CT data. Then I think you'll be having a better understanding. Uh, Rushikesh. Is saying, can you please show the mesh or surface model of this model? Because I am doubtful about the eye surface area being scanned. Okay, we'll see. Uh, we can show it to you, to you today, or else otherwise we'll do it tomorrow. Dear Prof, can I have yesterday's lecture recording? Yes, we shared it on the WhatsApp group. We'll share it again. Dr. Praveen. Yeah, are this you ready? This is the uh, intraoral scanner from. Three shape, the Trios Four, and it is the only wireless scanner available. Uh, it can be used in both uh, ways, as ma'am told. It can be used with the wire or with the battery, which is plugged over here and in the wireless format. 
So uh, if you want to scan uh, the this, can you see on the screen? Is my screen visible? Yes. We have to enter the patient name. It creates the case. Then this is the option available. We go for scan only. The next. Now the scanner is ready. There is the on off button on the uh, underface of the scanner. And this is the, uh, this is the part uh, from where the, uh, the detail will be acquired. Now, if we are going, firstly, we are going to scan the uh, lower model. In the similar way that the lower arts can be scanned. We have to keep the scanner as close as possible to the occlusal surface. Scanning anything colored is faster than scanning a white surface. This is how we scan. Next. So I'm having the upper cast uh, poured in stone. So this is how. So when we have an intraoral scanner, that means we don't want to scan the models. We actually want to scan the dental arches in the oral cavity, in the mouth only, and uh, to make it impressionless. So we don't need to take impressions. As the dental student students now are practicing taking impressions on uh, models, they they should know that uh, very soon this all technique would be obsolete, and they would be just taking scans. This is how the palette is recorded. You can have finer details. Do we have someone to be scanned? Yeah, we are having the same patient sitting over there. Yes. We can scan. We would, we would love to see the scanning of the oral cavity. Do we need to follow a specific path? Yes, there are options. Uh, to scan first arch first, the upper arch or maybe lower arch. So we'll see on the screen how the software dictates what to be done first. Yes. So even if we have done a uh, reduction of the tooth to prepare it for a crown or a bridge that can be scanned, if we have done a dental implant and we need to have a prosthesis fabricated for that, it can be scanned and uh, exported to the lab technician for final. The patient is the anterior processes. dentition, so I have just uh, scanned the anterior dentition part. Very 
in the upper arch. So hardly, uh, Dr. Sumit, would you suggest which arch is to be scanned first? What does the yes. software demand? Ask, the upper arch or the lower the arch? The lower arch to be scanned first. Uh, and then it proceeds to the upper one and then the occlusal part. Can Third time, it's the occlusion. So the both the teeth, upper and uh, lower teeth have to be in occlusion uh, so that the uh, scanning can be done. So at least one patient will have at least three times the scanning. And one arch scan takes about four to five minutes. That means for total scanning time would be about 15 minutes. So one arch, then second arch, and the third time it is the occlusion, which is scanned. The red box shows that we have moved in the wrong direction. And so it, will, it is not able to switch. When the green part is there, it shows that the uh, switching is performed in the right way. And we are having the... Also, there is an audio. So if it is continuously... It is, yeah, we remove it from the speaker right now or else... Uh, it, it would be disturbing. So yes. But there is audio also that if you are not looking at the screen, that audio will help you know whether you are scanning or you are stuck up. You can appreciate the palette part. Final details can easily be reported. Now, once we have scanned, certain scanners come with their own software. So once you have scanned, you have to export this file to their own CAD software so that you can design whatever you plan to. And there is a pathology in the... So Sumit, how do you sterilize your scanner from one patient to another? There is a protocol. We have to uh, clean it using uh, alcohol and uh, glutaldehyde. The so there's a question. There's a question. Do we need to apply any spray or not necessary for this before the scan? It has to. It has. We have already sterilized it before placing it in the mouth, and we clean it before placing it in the box. Yeah. So. Uh, are there special sheets available for the purpose of maintenance of hygiene and prevent cross infection? No. Uh, the scanning sheet will disturb the image quality. So sheets are not preferred. Uh, just that the area has to be disinfected before use on any particular patient. We are having four, four, after use. four, four probes. We are having four uh, probes available. So this can be changed like this. Another one can be put on. If we have two simultaneous patients to be scanned in the single sitting, and uh, uh, one we have to uh, keep it for calibration purpose. Do orthodontic wires or metallic prosthesis produce artifacts in the scanning? Uh, we have scanned uh, plates as well. Uh, any metallic surface, if it is colored, can be scanned. If not colored, we have not tried scanning uh, braces patients. Our orthodontic colleagues have not requested us to support them as of now. So we have not scanned uh, the braces uh, on the teeth. But I suppose there shouldn't be any problem while scanning a metallic surface on the teeth. Because that is what it is intended for. We can also scan finger from the scanner and some part yeah. of the finger. Can you show? Can you show the finger processes and these finger scanned? 
Uh, file if you can show or else just show us the 3D model. This is the finger prosthesis which we uh, printed after the scanning. On the screen. Finger model and the processes we designed and printed for that patient. Yeah, the finger scanning yeah. is good. Can you show us uh, scanning the, someone's eye? Yes, yes, please. Just a query. Ma'am, does the three shape scanner have a module for finger also? Because how does it accept the finger scans? Yes, we, that's why we purchased this because this is open. Whatever we plan to scan, we can scan. There's a, uh, on the system, uh, Sumit, can you show what it, uh, option do we choose when we have to do an open? It, it, it doesn't have a dedicated module for finger or any maxillofacial uh, part, but uh, we scan it in, in any of the arch and it saves the file as in STL format. So that STL file can be imported to the printer and can be printed. Like the finger uh, uh, we scanned previously, uh, got printed in the FDM printer. Mm. Visible? If you can remove the prosthetic part, just show the cut section finger 3D model. Mm. Just remove the uh, complete finger and show the section finger part only. Like this? Yes. So just bring it up. This yeah. is the uh, cut finger part and this is the prosthetic finger which we fabricated and great. Please. The fit is very perfect from the inferior surface. Yeah, depends upon the precision of the printer uh, in which we can get the accurate color. color. So this is what we yeah. did. Them printer to make a model. Good, <laughs> to check the precision of. Uh, and all these uh, scanning devices, uh, the number of STL generate from that uh, user caliper from the original. So uh, uh, there is the most part is scanned properly. So if you have someone in the office and you can scan the eye with this uh, scanner. Pradeep is there with me. So <laughs> can try. <laughs> <laughs> yes.
Pradeep, if you can open your eyes, so we'll have a good uh, image of the palpebral fissure as well. If it is not irritating, I don't know. If the light source is irritating, then you can shut your... Yeah. Actually, once the eye is blinked, so the it's unable to stitch it in an in that. Yeah. So, so I can try for the yeah. No, I don't know. Uh, was it disturbing, Pr uh, Pradeep? Yes, it was a bit disturbing to me. Yeah. Okay. It's basically for uh, yeah. scanning eyes. Actually, the uh, algorithm, uh, it, uh, the AI enabled an algorithm fit there is to trace from the occlusal surface of the teeth. So it's, it scans the uh, dentition very fast. However, when we try to scan some other anatomical part, there are issues with uh, it. So it's not that perfect and the results are not that what we want to have. But for dentition part, it's good. Yeah. So I think all of you have got a very good overview or experience of how the scanning is done intraorally as well as extraorally. And uh, we can close our today's meeting with this. Uh, any questions would be uh, answered. Uh, we have not yet tried on met metallic surfaces. surfaces. We'll see. Yeah. We'll try to scan one with braces. So maybe tomorrow we can call some patient from orthodontic department and see how the braces uh, are scanned. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay, one of probably we extra oral and the lab scanner. What is the difference in the quality and uh, practice? So with this, we end our today's session. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much.